Hello, I'm Alison Miller, the Scots Screever in Orkney for this year under the auspices of the National Library of Scotland and Orkney Library and Archive. This is the first time the Screever residency has been tied to a specific geographical area of Scotland and I'm really delighted that they chose to highlight Orkney and Orcadian. We're here tonight for the launch of Gousters, Glims and Variorums which is this lovely book here. Um, we've had an in-person launch in Orkney Library. Tonight's online event is hosted by the National Library. So welcome everybody. I can't see you, but I believe you are out there and I'm not just talking into a vacuum. Gousters, Glims and Variorums is the first book from Orkney Voices, the group that you're going to meet today. Orkney Voices started as part of Scottish Pens Many Voices project four years ago, and it's kept going ever since. It's supported now by the George Mackay Brown Fellowship, a charity set up to encourage new writing in Orkney, as well as celebrating writers from the past. Part of the reason for locating the Screever residency in Orkney this year is that it coincides with the centenary of George Mackay Brown, Orkney's most famous and best loved writer. Gousters, Glims and Variorums is the GMB Fellowship's centenary publication in honour of George. So here tonight we want to show you some of Orkney, introduce you to place names you might not have heard of, in a language you might not be familiar with. So I'll I'll give a name check to our readers tonight who are all members of the Orkney Voices group, some members of the group, and they'll be reading a selection of their work tonight. They are Lorraine Bruce, Vera Butler, Sheila Garson, Ingrid Grieve, Essie Grieve and Barbara Johnston. And they'll each say a bit about their work before they read it. We've divided the reading into sections as the book is also divided. So our first section is called Map in Orkney. So you'll hear a bit about our place names from Sheila Garson and Ingrid Dave. And you'll hear about a bonny day spent on the shore in Orkney by Barbara Johnson. And then we will all read an Orkney sat nav, which was how we imagined it might be if we were being directed in Arcadian by a sat nav instead of the usual, at the next junction, turn right. So we'll do that at the end of this section. Sheila, would you like to start? This is called Place Names and it's really uh, inspired by who the um, 19th century map makers changed a lot of the, the names for were our dos and the way that I might say them to a, a much more anglicised form. Place Names. What prude Norse heritage chanted for the name book? Quai Meris, Quai Moorhouse, Sanson, Sands End, Kirkle, Kirkton. Fine old names are lost on the map. Hornger, Haraldskar, Skenstead, Skenstoft, Gert, Garth. Belaird, the factor, they can't best. Sanger, Sansgarth, Estes, East House, Osted, Ostoft. Yet the old words still hark doing the ears. Fristigarth, Fristiger, White Cleat, Whitelet, Diggings, Danes. And I'm going to read you three very short poems um, all made up of place names. And the first one is somebody um, knowing a very good mood and somebody then trying to calm the boat. And it's called A Bad Mood. That great muckle escadale, he's nothing but a thick begging, a fetcher pigger, blaster hole, twat quai, screw. Ooh, you know what anger you soon worse than the tongue of Wester Bester. Heshi bear no. Tuck piece on you. Next one is too much homebrew. 
I'm got a right roar of heat. Me puggies belly a crew, and now I'm got a dose of the lash. Oh, horrify. And this last one then is again two folks picking to each other, and it's called a coosh day. What the hell ya? Aye, it's a bit airy. Airy? It's how a lee. The sky's hammer muggly, muggly and the sea's chalder tow and kellyan hellyan. Ah, bet it's gyre and new. Start them to cry. Afore long, it'll be awkward. Hello. This one is called Sandside Sunday. Sandside is a favourite beach that I like to go to in the parish of Dearness. Um, a Sunday run is a common thing in Orkney and uh, this was a run that we took to Sandside. Beyond the kirkyard the island lies low, the horse stands black and prude, the lighthouses flash on its regular light and our it all is a pink pillowed clude. Wave after wave rolls relentlessly in, crest and white as it curls and then bracks. There's patterns and swirls to be seen in the troughs. The surge washes away the dipper's tracks. There's whorls and runes on the sandstone rocks, roosty and grey and reed and cream, worn smooth and rude by the rolling drift. A shiny black with a snowy white sea. A river of gold at the edge of the tide, late sun reflecting on sand. A lacy froth gently runs up the shore, but it disna fairly reach land. Hidden back as the sun sinks low, long shadows are hint on the ground. The burn runs shallow over the shingle, into me pooch goes the blue glass I found. A treasure to tap we a pebble or twa, the echo and sound of the sea, a puckle of photos for memories, the best way to set me cares free. This is where Orkney sat now, a journey to Kirkwall Library to Burwick. I'm got the sense of direction of a hane at the best of times. Get in the car. Turn left at the car park. No, we're going to turn right and then right again. And then you'll no need to go round a roundabout. No, I think you should go to the hand straights. Cross straight at the crossroads. What crossroads are we on? Watch out for tourists. They walk up the middle of the road. Have you been to the seafarer's charity shop yet? Johnny got a new food mixer. Mind the bollards. Turn right. For God's sake, don't turn left. Look out for the buses and streamlines, vans and tourists sat on photos of the cathedral. Just standing in the middle of the road. Roll down the window and ask, do you have pavements while you comfy? It's no brigadoon. What tell you we still go with horse and kirk? Folk work here. It's no Disneyland. Don't take lifts for anybody. He might be a mass murderer. What are we now? Go past Hartamo and his mobility scooter on the right hand side. What's Hartamo? He keeps an eye on the tune. Bear left you up past the old kirk. What's the old kirk? The cathedral. Squeeze past the buses in the park cars and bear right into Quality Street. What's Quality Street? The Crescent. Qua lives in H. McKay's old house now after the F. Ski route. Never mind all that. We're trying to get to Burrack. Where are we now? We're no spoken about the other side of the road. Bonnie the Burnham trees. Go oh, by Gallows Hall on the right. The place for the, the, place for the Burnham Witches. You'll see the Bignall Park gates on your left. For the head, the county show. It'll be winter before we get to the Ham Straits. Dark nights drawn in. Watch at the junction. 
give way and then go straight. Take a deep breath as you go by the Highland Park. Breathe in the angel share. But watch, you know, over the limit. Yeah, can I get drunk breathing in fumes? You're on the ham straights, no. You can go like the clappers, as long as you don't go over 60. Stop at the garage beside the woolly pigs and have a cup of tea with Michael. Myra's cats are not there anymore. She's got a dog now. We cannot possibly get to Borick, for we've no gotten to ham yet. We have to get to Borick to catch the boat. We're no even mentioned neither button. And that makes me sad. It's all been team done. Oh, we're getting morbid now. Let's get gone again. Come into the village. You better go to the toilet here, because the one at the barriers is out of action. Then somebody for the hop crashed into it. Struck him, head's knackered. Head's no so easy to pee outside as it used to be. Get in doing your hookers. Head's a skill that we're lost in. You have to watch the direction of the wind. Well, lasses, I think we're missed the boat. Just get a room at the Commodore. Okay, that was lovely. Thanks very much. That was where, where Orkney sat now and we, we, we didn't get very far with it. The next section is about George Mackay Brown or inspired by George Mackay Brown. This being the centenary of his birth, we read a lot of his work in Orkney Voices and the writing you're about to hear took some aspect of George's work as a starting point. His poem Stone and Star, his love of outsiders, the tinkers, the so-called tinkers of previous generations, Animals, an Orkney bestiary, he wrote a Scottish bestiary at one point, A Hat for George, which was a project we did for the centenary along with Orkney Library, and his play The Storm Watchers. In this section you will hear from Vera, Essie, Lorraine, Barbara and Ingrid. Vera, over to you. I wrote this poem after hearing George Mackay Brun's poem about Aiki Fee, a tinker, and it reminded me of stories my granny told me about the travelling folk coming by her house when she was a pretty girl, and her mum, me great granny, always gave them something to eat, even though she had 14 bairns around to feed. And this is called On the Road. Beggars and thieves, they called us. Romanies, travellers, were chosen name. Pull the curtains, lock the doors. Do they think they're no seen? Rap at the door, peer through the windows. Times are heard and lean. Ruin the houses we go, cap in hand. A hungry greet and burn means a hen's team. Run out of the tone, cursed and chased. A kindly farmer's wife gives us eggs and cream. A dry stone dyke with a grassy ditch. We can stay the night and dream. Oh, life on the road, where the world is kind and nature is still worth friend. George also wrote about animals. Uh, this is one that has invaded Orkney recently, Stoats and I really, really don't like them. It's called The Blighter. I thought it was him I saw at the ruffle of stones. The blighter was here again the day. The dark and sleek and vicious ill triggered thing about to attack the lives of those who are his prey. He's back, and this time he is to ours pals, terrifying a pity rabbit running towards his end. The sterlings are after nests, yelling their warning cry as they fail and fail again their youngings to defend. Then the blighters are off cavorting across the field, like young Kai exploring a field of new grace, leaping in Scotland in party style, oblivious, chuffed with themselves for a few lives less. But mark me words, their eye is, their end is nigh, for atween me and next door sprightly cat, we have a plan that involves a spade and a trap, that will see you all off where a muckle splat.
Inspiration for this poem came from George Mackay Brown's Stone and Star and the elusive grotty bucky search for by many orkney folk as they're supposed to bring good luck. The shale. The shale hunted on a lazy afternoon with stooped keel to swale the char of good fortune. The shale to shale like our ocean dreams curl through its iridescent walls and tumble into waxy cochlea. The shale clamped between middle and index and blowing a joyous whistle loud enough to mur the lugs and raise the shaldros. The shale ground by the sea mill to fake another, cracked and spilled into a spitting pan. The shale that found a stone in its shoe and thole as hurtful in the hope of trading it for a peril of great price. Alistair mentioned the hat project for George Mackay Brown. Over a hundred folk knitted hats, which were then auctioned off and money went to charity. I'm not terribly keen on knitting, so instead of knitting a hat for George, I wrote three hats for GMB, imagined. A dark, rainy night, weary tramp of work boats echoing off the closed walls, Pity George runs to greet Feather at the door. The postman's hat placed on curly head, empty bag trailing the thin shoulder to the floor. Excited Bairn shushed by a calm mother's voice as Feather sits to his meal. A warm, bright hoidy. Friends gather on the shore, literary, artistic, musical, a glass to cheer, sparkling conversation ebbs and flows like the tide on Rockwick Beach. Light gleams on rounded boulders. Talk to sultry now as the midday heat builds. George lies back and tilts a straw hat over his eyes. A trip out for errands, bitter day along the street. Capricious winds swirl up the passages to the sea, glimpsed grey and sullen through the narrow gaps. Pierhead cronies gather, collars up against the bluster. George pulls his woolly hat tight over his ears, thankful for the friend who has sent it in the mail. This the next one was also inspired by George McIbrone's Stone and Star, The Owl Stone Bench. The owl stone bench by the shore, where the fisherman sat and watched the sky, where the old man sat and watched the boat gone to sea, where that wife sat and watched for the boat to turn to shore, where the bairns played and waited for their feather to come home, where the family gathered and lit a lantern to guide the boat in, where they placed a plaque to remember. I'm going to read the resting place now. And I wrote this after a night filming George Mackay Brown's Storm Watchers at Warbeth Beach. Rehearsals were all done by Zoom due to COVID, of course, and it was directed by Gerda Stevenson. And this was the first time we had actually all met together. And we walked down to the shore together and did our filming. Now, George Mackay Brown is buried in Warbeth Beach, a Warbeth graveyard, and they were on the beach just right down below that. So it was a kind of, yeah, quite a, a sort of, I don't know what type of night it was, but it, it meant quite a lot anyway. So I hope you can enjoy this. And it's called The Resting Place. No when did I cane in that kirkyard. They stood aloof in their wheel tended layers, a place of comfort for many, but not for me. 
We met beside the kirkyard wall. Some folk I kent and some unken to me. Walk on the road to the shore, a distance between us, no only in feet, and me accent broadest to all. The shore, when we reached it, our grace and stones, with a place of beauty and serenity in this mad world. The hoy hills so near, I could almost reach out and touch them, comfortingly close tonight. The film crew, will a slight exaggeration, guided us through the movements, and laughter and sadness mingled beside the cowl blue black sea, fingers numbing with a sinking sun. Oil lamps and torches new lit for the final shots. A feeling of bonding together today were best. With George feel this love was warp vibrate through rock, grace and earth to his eternal bait? Or was he here with? So here I stood on Warbeth shore as Ketak. Waiting and hoping beside the dark sea that me man Peter would be washed ashore and I would find him deed. Deed like me feelings for him, only then could me life start again without fear and toil and sadness. It felt like that night that we stepped back in time, something so timeless in a way, the power of the sea, the hills of hoy darkening and looming bigger the darker it got. The rhythm of the waves were broken only by the call of the Ida ducks, silhouetted against the dying light in the waste as they came home to roost. And there we stood, reluctant to leave, till the cowl made a shift. Torches and lamps lit were path, and voices and accents mingled together as we came to the kirkyard wall. And where before I thought, I can't no one, I stopped and whispered, thank you, the men I'd never met. Thank you, Vera, for ending that one. And if you would like to see Vera as Kittuck in The Storm Watchers, there's a chance to see it again at the moment. If you go to the St Magnus Festival website, um, it's on until the 7th of November. It's called um, The Festival 2021 Revisited. And now it's very much worth seeing if you, if you get the chance. So this next section is called Elements O Orkney. Uh, as you can imagine, Orkney is pretty much at the mercy of the elements, so it would be quite surprising if we didn't write about them. This is a very small selection from the book. There's a lot more that covers the elements in Orkney, um, but this is a small selection here from Ingrid, Lorraine, Barbara and Izzy the night. I'm going to give you a recipe this time um, and hopefully it's a recipe with all the elements to cook up a right good storm. Recipe for a good storm. To start with you'll need a red morning sky, a ripple of sea and a kithy wind. Add a gathering of fair weather clouds, a scatter of showers and a change of air. Leave it to build until the sky turns black, a gouster howls and there's a good demel in the sea. Steer in thunder, lightning, and hilly shores. No, bait like mad until you have a northwesterly screamer howling and screaming with a sea of rugged housing, crashing and smoking and roaring in an air filled with salt spray. No, this poem is a celebration of that most wondrous and decadent meals, a boiling of tatties. Freshly dug apples of the earth, gifted in an old carrier bag. Dirled around the pot to free them of diaphanous skins and fine sandy loam. Boiled, salted and ceremoniously shacking at the back door to release the last drops of moisture back to the generous sun gold. What to serve with such a glorious dish of steaming, creamy tubers? Plenty spark and firm butter, turning salt puddered pearls, shiny and golden. 
the silky surface pops, an mmm-flavoured mash fills your mouth and comforts your hungry belly. Hello, I'm not sure if I'm on or not. Your camera's not on, Barbara. Can you switch right. your camera on? Yeah. I lost the whole computer before. Oh. Okay, oh. am I on now? You are on now, yeah, you are. Right. Sorry about that, folks. This poem is called Wid, and it's one of the elements poems, but it was also inspired by stone and star from the wreck of the Archangel, the George Mackay Brown. Wid. Hard to find on more treeless aisles. Wid to mark couples for a flagstone roof. Wid to mark a door to keep out the elements. Wid to mark a box bed in the corner. Wid for the shore to mark a chair and a creepy. Wid to mark a cradle for the bairns. Wid to mark a pen to keep the coo apace. Wid to mark a borrow for the dung. Wid to mark a hanner for the flu. Wid to mark clogs to keep feet out of the gutter. Wid to mark a pulpit for the kirk. Wid to mark a coffin to bury the old wife. Wid to mark a cross to mark her passing. The cross we all must bear. There's a custom in our tradition in the spring of the year for folk burn the old grace in the ditches. So this is maybe one about a feather speaking to his boys after a burning old grace in the ditches. It's called, what were you thinking? You're not of the entire row of steps. Did you know watch the air or the wind? What were you thinking? You trailed the glowing neighbor grace along the ditch. Did you not think to look ahead you? What were you thinking? You thought it was wheat in the buddha. Did you not notice how high the flames were licking? What were you thinking? You heard the ping of me wires tightening. Did you not see me stabs gone black? What were you thinking? Oh, you saw the reek drifting across the road. Did you know twig it was fearful thick? What were you thinking? You can hear me now. No more burning. No more old grace in the ditches for you. You have new stabs to drive. A new fence. That's what I'm thinking. Thanks, Izzy, and that's a, a, a good warning for us at the moment, um, given the state of the world and the COP26 going on in Glasgow. No more, no more burning. Um, this last section here is um, it's called Lockdown. No, there isn't a section in the, in the book called Lockdown. I don't know. We didn't really want to have a section called Lockdown, but given that a lot of the, the, the pieces in the book were written during Lockdown, um, they, I thought we could have a section at the end of this because we're no out of the woods yet, um, we're no out of the pandemic and um, this section deals with a lot of the way that, ways that uh, Orkney was affected under lockdown, some that we shared with other places and some that were unique to Orkney and some that were unique to particular members of the group but um, it, Orkney was affected with the social distancing we were all affected with um, it was affected with the way funerals were conducted. They couldn't be in churches and a new, a new tradition developed in lockdown. It, was, it, it affected the clays we wore and thoughts we had. So Sheila, Izzy, Lorraine, and then all of us are going to finish off. Um, we'll finish off with a renga, which is a form of Japanese group poem which was written in lockdown via email and led by Yvonne Gray of the George Mackay Brown Fellowship. 
So we'll finish with that. But for the moment, Sheila will start. I think this is probably something that everybody present will recognise. The, the wearing of masks, the distancing, and okay, we're maybe not quite so, we're not at two metre distancing new, but I think we all remember what like all of that was. So this is called We're Masked Dance. I smiling, smiling eyes. A distant nod, a bob. Six feet, two metres. Apart, but still together. We're masked dance. Hands reach out, stretch. Clean, sanitised fingers. Dinna touch far back to hang by the side. We're masked dance. A dune cast luck. Feet lift, shift. Twa metres apart in a solitary waltz. We're masked dance. As we watch, we're world barrel to a deadly tune. We dare not quite. Or mass dance. And the next poem is um, a reflection on, on how funerals changed. Um, sadly, we lost, I live in a, one of the, the little islands in Orkney, and, and sadly, we lost a number of, of folk on the island, not to COVID, but, but folk who died during uh, the, the days of. of tight restrictions when funerals were, were all private and they couldn't go to the to the kirk or uh, whatever and, and what folk did was that um, we stood along the road and showed our respects as the hearse went past. So this was written um, to, to sort of encapsulate I think what, what happened and who a lot was felt. Pity groups dotted, folk in twos or threes, Spaced, isolated, remembering. Wrapped against the weather, bent against the wind. Alone, yet together, remembering. Hushed conversation, moments, memories. Quiet contemplation, remembering. On this sad day, waiting for you to pass our way, remembering. Stand and prude, a final farewell, head bowed, remember. And this is another in uh, about what like it was to stand outside as the hearse goodbye. I'm waiting on me siblings, they're all coming here outside to stand for any a spur to grow. The hearse will go in front of our house. I have a pot of soup on, just in case they need warmed up. It's bitterly cold out here the day. She's the last old Marowit wife, born and brought up here till me. Annie was never out of Orkney, except for the day Cameron came home for winning big brother. Her and Billy get hour on the ham level, but didna set feet on the pier. And I have another one. Um, written in lockdown um, about what happened to me shoes in lockdown. It's called Lost Shoes. Be smart work shoes are no been seen for months. They're lying in the cupboard and I'm fair they'll no longer fit. Me shoes for the wedding that's been cancelled twice are in a gay fancy box wondering when me feet will do a bridal march. Me trainers for gym classes, Sumba and the likes, a lying upside doing yearning for me feet that's lost the beat. Me ankle boots are fairly sad, they're pinned for nent the shopping bags, they're no been to Tesco or little, for me feet having a cramped an aisle. Me walking boots are grim, paved aside the outer door, they're been on, they're been off when me feet's been out a dolder. Me slippers are knackered, they're flat and lost their warmth. For they're the welcome means that me feet has seen the most. Uh, this poem was written when we were first in lockdown, uh, when we were getting our messages delivered to the door and never gone out. And every pity thing 
seem to be tinged with bouts of COVID-19. And it's called the nugget. There's a nugget of blue cheese under the table. I caught a glimpse of it when I sat down. I mind dropping it yesterday or maybe the day before. Lunch was wastry water biscuits with butter and blue cheese. Stilton or maybe Danish blue. I wonder if the cultures and the cheese are interacting with the bacteria on me woody fake laminate flooring. Maybe there's a scientific miracle happening right there under me kitchen table. Some unkin pathogens or maybe mixing with the spores on the cheese and mutating into a mold juice capable of killing this bloody virus. It's maybe sitting under that nugget of cheese, just waiting to be fun by some 21st century Dr. Fleming. Well, well, me cup's empty. I'll away and get the dustpan and brush. Thanks. Thank you. And now we're all going to read the, the Renga. Perth and Shermalines are Renga in autumn. Bonnie blue skies, though our barometers fall, and Hwalbach swell for the worst. Ravens swoop, white horses prance, a lensy, the old wife called it. A watery sun reflects and trinks, a rainbow over a stubble field. Out on the horizon, dark clouds gather. Three of bombs to an starvation, waves wash his pity body. A better life, they said. Smile, that universal welcome. Lost a hint of face mask. Ein halo floating on a silver sea that day for the bus set her doon. In this light, it looks like you could let the roost land on the shore, feet dry. Cave in collects, steams, chuckies, hurl the burrow up the brae to start a new begin. Hard washed hands gave pace to a heart and shell malines. In the ruins of a garden, petals fall for a single rose. Yows drift a hint the dyke and huddle in rows. Dreaming news compounds the gloom, dispelled by pity laughing faces, far away, yet close. The sky is tingling with stars, lit trees go up in blank windows. Cowl weak grun under the kai, cloven hoofs seek and slatted courts. The planets align, the virus shifts. And still she sits in endless motion, mindlessly knitting. Suitcases gather dust on tops of wardrobes, under stairs. Poor gouster scale most wabs, breathe in the sweet smell, sweet Mayflower smell. You seven sisters shivering in the dark, shower us with light. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm just getting this through. Really. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, all our readers today. Um, and uh, Lorraine, if you would like to switch your camera back on again. I would just like to thank everybody on behalf of the National Library of Scotland uh, who hosted this tonight and Orkney Voices. Thank you to everybody on behalf of Orkney Voices, to all of you who joined us tonight and to all of you who will watch it in video later on.